Hello, this is the first video in a series of videos I'm making about the Microsoft Connect. This thing. <laughs> so what is this thing? How does it work? And how do you write your own software that makes use of this thing? How can you do all sorts of creative coding projects? Now, there's a lot of different programming languages and environments and frameworks and libraries for how you might make use the Connect. Um, I'm going to use this thing called Processing, Processing 3, the third edition version of Processing, uh, which is a Java-based programming environment, open source uh, environment. Um, that there is a connect, several different connect libraries for. Uh, eventually, I will hope to make a video where I look at P5.js, which is a JavaScript framework uh, for doing creative coding in the browser and how might you get the, the, the stuff from the connect, <laughs> what is this thing called the connect, in the browser itself, uh, which I think will be an exciting thing to see as well. Um, but in this first video, what I want to do, I'm going to get into the code really in the next video. And what I want to do in this video is give you an overview. So what are the different uh, editions of the Connect. There's a bunch of different ones that you could buy. What are the pieces that you need? How do you get the library to make use of the Connect? That sort of stuff. And you can see I have a basic example that's running behind me with the Connect version 2, and I will talk through the pieces of this code. So first, let's think about the different versions of the Connect. So this is, this one here, <laughs> I need reading glasses. I'm gonna, this one is the 14, model 1414. This one is the, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here and try not to trip over to myself. Um, and I gotta grab this uh, eraser for a second. Um, so let's make a list here. So the, the two key pieces of information for you are you need to decide, are you using the Connect version one or the Connect version two? <sighs> I'm probably going to get lots of stuff wrong here that you can write in the comments and I'll put little annotations on the YouTube video that fix them, but hopefully I'll get things loosely right. So the original Connect version 1, model 1414, is the one that came out, I think it was November 2011, 12, somewhere around there. I remember the weekend it came out, people, people were quote unquote hacking it, but really just making, but by hacking it I mean making open source drivers to, to read the data, a driver being a thing that your computer runs to talk to the hardware device. Um, and so when that came out, uh, a library, I worked on a library called Open Connect for Processing. And the reason why it's called uh, Open Connect is because it's making use of the Open Connect, uh, an Open Connect, an open source uh, driver for, for uh, connecting to the Connect, which is also known as a Lib Free Net. So this is sort of the genesis of all of this. Um, the thing that I built for processing is just a thin layer on top of work that lots and lots of other people did, which allows you to get the data from the Connect. Now, let's come back to the Connect. Like, what is it's over here? And then I'll get, I'll get to the other editions in a second. Like, what is this thing? So this is the original Connect. And you can see here that there are three little circles on here. It's like a little, nice little friend with three eyeballs. And what do each of these eyeballs do? So one of them, if we, oh, camera, oh, oh, shift menu. I suck at making these videos. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm going to go anyway. Okay, so this is the Kinect, uh, uh, um, and it has three little eyeballs, one of which is an infrared projector. So this is, this is what the 1414 does, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, I need a different marker here. What happens once you get to the Connect version 2, how that works differently. Um, <clears throat> it has an infrared projector which sends out infrared light into the room. Then it has what I would call, you know, you could call it a sensor or a camera, but it has an infrared camera to read the infrared light that's in the, in the room. What is infrared light? It's, you know, light that's all around us but is invisible. Somebody with a physics degree could explain that better. But this is blasting out infrared light. This infrared camera is reading it. So what, what is the value of doing this? So the interesting thing is the kind of light that it's passing out is actually a whole lot of infrared dots. It's projecting a lot of infrared dots into the room that look like this. And it's a very specific pattern of dots. And the Connect itself, it knows what that pattern of dots is supposed to look like. So if that pattern of dots, if I have the Connect here, it's blasting the infrared light, lands on a flat surface, the infrared camera that's reading where those dots landed, that's seeing those dots reflecting back, is going to see like, oh, it matches exactly the pattern of dots that I know. That's a flat surface. 
But if this surface was curved, those dots will appear distorted. By analyzing that distortion, the Kinect can recognize what things are closer and what things are further away. So the value of this is it uh, is often referred to, you can think of it as a depth camera or a depth sensor. This is what this infrared projector and infrared camera are doing. They're measuring the depth in, of, of each pixel in the room. So while a regular web camera says, here's a 640 by 480 image, each pixel has a red, green, and blue value, and it's beautiful, isn't it? The colors of the rainbow are there in this image. Um, the Kinect is saying, I see, I don't see RGB. What I see is I see a pixel, and instead of telling you what color that pixel is, I'm gonna tell you how far is that pixel away from the sensor. And this is incredibly valuable in computer vision. You know, one of the classic computer vision problems that people try to solve is background removal. You know, that's why I have this oh, green screen. Oh, I have to go underneath this here. Okay, I have the obstacle course in my office. I'm going underneath this to turn this camera back on, and I'm coming back underneath here. I have this. Hello, I have this. Um, I have this green screen here behind me that you can see. Um, and so the, the uh, camera is saying every green pixel, remove it and put the stuff from the computer behind it. But if I had a connect, I don't have to say, look for the green pixels behind me. I can just say, look for any pixel that's farther than two feet or, or some amount of centimeters. <laughs> I'm trying to be a metric. I'm trying to be metric. I want to be a metric person, but I'm not. Um, so uh, you could remove, you could, you could analyze things. It makes it really easy to find a human being in the room because a human being has a certain kind of shape. It makes it really easy to do quick and dirty 3D scanning. There's lots and lots of possibilities of what you can do once you have access to the depth. Now, there was this third little eye here, and this, by the way, is just an RGB camera. So one of the things the Kinect can also do is just see the colors in the room. So in addition to having this infrared camera, it has an RGB camera. Now there's a bit of a problem here, <laughs> which is that notice how both of these things are not in the same place. So the infrared camera sees the depth of a given pixel at a different place that the RGB camera sees that color. So this is an alignment problem, a calibration problem, where the, the color pixels don't necessarily line up exactly with the depth pixels. And there are lots of strategies for solving this problem. Uh, and lots of frameworks and libraries, in particular the official Microsoft SDK, which has um, things baked into it that do this for you. But one of the nice things that we'll see once we get to the Kinect v version 2 is it has something called a registered image, which is an image that aligns the depth pixels with the color pixels. Okay, so this is what the Kinect does. And I really described here what the Kinect version 1 does. There was also a model 1473 that came out, I don't know, a year or two later. Um, this one has some problems. In particular, there's a little bit of a bug uh, with currently with running it with the processing library, although it does work. It kind of only will work every other time. <laughs> Can't figure it out for the life of me. Um, so, but both of these will work with the library. What you need to look for with the library is the version 1 examples. So, that's that. Now, in between here, there was like this Kinect for Windows. And I think this was like a version of the Kinect that the Microsoft made to, to plug into like Windows computers. Originally, this was designed for use with the Xbox for, a game, for games that you would play by, you know, dancing. I'm kicking my leg, by the way, if you can't see that. Um, and, uh, um, but, you know, then Microsoft realized there's I don't know what Microsoft, what's in Microsoft has, but I'm, I'm speculating here, but that to make a version that's designed to work with uh, just regular old laptops and computers. Um, I'm not sure if this one works with the processing library, but more recently, and I, I, I have this one plugged in and like mounted on the wall over there, so I can't hold it up and show it to you. The Kinect version two is a newer and quite significant upgrade from the first Kinect. Um, and it actually uses a completely different technique. It's, it uses infrared light, but it uses a technique called time of flight. So it sends the infrared light out, measures how long it takes for it to bounce back, and that how long that takes uh, lets the sensor know how far away things are. Kind of like a bat maybe does stuff with sound to see, I don't know, you know dolphins do stuff like that, but all with sound. So with light bouncing it back and forth, um, the new Kinect does that. And I suppose it's a bit more accurate, it's faster, uh, and uh, the RGB cameras also in the new Kinect is higher resolution. Okay, so that's the basics overview. And if I come back over here, you can see now, now I'm running an example. I have the Kinect right over here. You can't see it. 
I could, I could maybe like turn, I, I kind of like if I hold it up over here, can, there you go, there it is. <laughs> this is the new one, <laughs> I'm gonna put it back. Uh, that felt like a little scary, like everything was gonna fall over. Um, and you can see now that uh, what you're seeing in this particular image is an example of a processing sketch which is rendering all of the pieces of what the library, what the Connect offers. Now, oh, I, but I have something more to mention about this, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So up top, you can see that's just the RGB image. So it's like I have a webcam over here. I have a webcam over here. Hi, webcam. That sort of thing, right? So that's the webcam, uh, that's, that's the RGB camera, and it's actually, I believe, I didn't actually check, but it's a, it's a pretty high resolution image. Um, down below, this is the raw feed of what the infrared camera is seeing. So this is what the infrared camera is seeing, and it uses that to extrapolate depth. So mostly it just looks like this creepy thing, but you can make use of that, you can get that image as well. Um, up top, up the top right, this is what's known as the depth image. So the, what the Kinect is measuring is in millimeters. It's measuring uh, a value between zero and 4,500. How far is the thing away from the camera? And then often a depth image is used to visualize that data. So in this case, you can see as I start to go further and further back, I get brighter. As I start to come closer and closer, I get darker. So it's mapping the, uh, the color of every pixel to how far away it is. And you can see just from a standpoint now how much easier that might be to pick out my hand Right, because my hand is the only thing that has this very, very dark color uh, as opposed to other things. Now, there is something funny in the back. What's up there? Above, oh, that's a window. <laughs> I was like, what's that black square up there? That's a window, that's the door. I, you can see all sorts of things inside, inside this room that you may not have seen before. And then down in the bottom right, this is the registered image. So this is not part of, if you use the version one, connect with the Open Connect library. This is not part of that. However, uh, it, with version two, this is the image that aligns all of the RGB values from the webcam with the depth values. So if you wanted to, uh, hopefully something I might be able to demonstrate in some video is just do background removal where you see only me and I, take, I get rid of all the pixels that are behind me. Um, that might be something that I could do here with, with that particular image. Oh, did the, oh, the laptop went to sleep. Come back, oh, wake up. Okay, so a uh, couple more things. So what I want to show you now is how do you get this library to run this, like this particular example. So a couple things. One is, here's the, I'll put all this in the, in the description of the video. This is the URL. The, the uh, library is at github.com slash Schiffman Open Connect for processing. You don't need to go to that URL, but that's where the source code is. There's a little bit of documentation there. I want to make, a, give a big thank you to Thomas Sanchez uh, Lengeling. I, I might not have pronounced his last name correctly. He wrote all the code for making this library work with the Connect version two. So I worked on the version one a, a number of years ago and <laughs> sort of floundered and Thomas came back and revived this and really helped uh, over the summer. Um, and there is also, I have a little a page that has some additional documentation. It's shiftman.net slash p5 slash connect and you know, this is some text that kind of goes through uh, the different versions uh, and some of these examples as well that I'm going to cover in the videos. Now, in order to get the actual library itself, what you need to do is go to, uh, one, you know, first you need to download processing if you don't have that already. That's at processing.org. Then what you'll need to do is once you have processing, uh, it might look just like this to you, something empty. You're going to go to sketch, import library, add library. Now you can see that I have already, you know, I have three libraries here. I already have that library, but I'm going to pretend that I don't for a second. I'm going to go to add library, which opens up this contributions manager. I can type in connect right here. And this is something really quite important now to bring up. So there are several different libraries. There is, by the way, something called Simple OpenNI, which is an older library. OpenNI was an open source platform, open source framework for doing skeleton tracking, meaning finding the human form, where the hands are, where the head is, which is very, very powerful and things that you can do with the Kinect. I'm starting with just the raw depth data. Um, but OpenNI, I think, was purchased by Apple and then kind of like shut down as an open thing. But there are some efforts to revive it. And so uh, you could Google around and that's something that you could possibly use. I'll try to include some links. But you can see that it's currently this simple OpenNI. It's no longer compatible with Processing 3. Uh, that's why it's grayed out. Connect V2 for Processing. This is a library that makes use of the Microsoft official SDK. And I'm going to demonstrate that using a PC in a later video. Um, 
This is a key, uh, this is a really uh, great thing to use if you want to get all of the magic that Microsoft has spent all this time developing. So what the Kinect just gives you is raw depth data, raw RGB data, but what the K Microsoft SDK does is it pulls that data in and on and it analyzes it and finds where's the human being, like what kind of muscle are they making, like where's their head, like is their hand open or closed, and it's so much uh, sort of a layer of analysis on the raw depth data that will give you a ton of information. So, but for that, you do need to use a Windows machine. Of course, there are some strategies for like sending the data from a Windows machine to another machine to, through like a WebSocket, what's a WebSocket, all sorts of stuff, but we'll come to that in a later video. Um, and uh, so those would be the two libraries that, uh, but the library that I'm using today, which you know, is already installed, you can see by the green check mark, you would just need to click it and uh, click this install button and it would download and install. Um, that this is the library I'm using today. It uses open source drivers. It only looks at the raw depth data. So this is good for a bunch of different kind of creative applications that I hope to show you in the next set of videos. So this was a long, rambling, 16-minute explanation about the Kinect that you may or may not have found useful or interesting, but I imagine you've already turned it off if you didn't. And in the next video, what I will demonstrate is, is just how to write a program that gets that depth image and once it, uh, I mean, bring that back, oh, it's not running here, Get, gets that depth image and maybe visualizes that depth image in some way. So that's where we'll start. And then I'll look at a couple other scenarios along the way as well. Okay, and so thanks for being here and watching and talk to you soon.